When JFK was assassinated in November 1963, the entire world was taken by surprise. Yet one aspect of the assassination not often discussed is how the USSR, the United States' rival in the Cold War, felt about it. So how did they? How did the USSR react to JFK's assassination? Well, news of events reached the USSR mere minutes after they occurred in the USA, and the wider Soviet population was in a state of shock. In the halls of power, this shock was also present, and one of the first things that the General Secretary of the USSR, Nikita Khrushchev, did was to make a statement denouncing the assassination and giving his condolences to the USA, the new President Lyndon B. Johnson, and JFK's widow, Jackie Kennedy. Publicly, the image was one of calm solidarity with the United States. Behind the scenes, it was one of blind panic. The KGB immediately launched an investigation into whether or not it or any of its agents or contacts had anything to do with the events, and the answer was no and the upper echelons of the Soviet government would have been comforted when an American, Lee Harvey Oswald, was arrested. What's that? He's a Marxist who used to live in the USSR. Oh boy. The KGB investigated again and discovered that they never at any point tried to recruit him whilst he lived there since he was seen as unreliable. The USSR opted to share all of its files on Oswald and was quick to offer their assistance publicly because they really didn't want to be blamed and Khrushchev wasn't too keen on the idea of nuclear war. For the Soviet Union and its leadership, the days after the assassination were some of the most dangerous it had ever lived through, barring the obvious. The KGB believed that JFK had been assassinated by the far right, who would then blame the USSR, invade Cuba, and then start a nuclear war. Some higher-ups didn't believe this version of events, but were still concerned that a leaderless USA could see a rogue general fire a nuclear weapon at Moscow in vengeance. As such, the USSR took the position of a friendly and open assistant with anything the Americans wanted. And as a result of this uncertainty, the entire Soviet military was placed on high alert and preparations for war were made throughout the entire Eastern Bloc. Soviet leadership also had reservations concerning JFK's successor, LBJ, since they had no idea what his personal opinions were. Was he going to have strict policies concerning the USSR, or was he going to be open to cooperation. At the time, they didn't know, and not knowing made them very uncomfortable. It wasn't long until they got their answer when LBJ blamed a communist conspiracy rooted in Cuba for the assassination and promptly escalated the Cold War. For a brief moment, the Cold War had ground to a halt, with East and West united in grief for a US president. However, international politics waits for no man, and it wasn't long until the Cold War was back on track again. I hope you enjoyed this episode and a special thanks to my Patreon supporters, James Bizanet, John Lucid, Danny Maloney, A Man of Culture, Marvin Cassow, John Bizquez, Mo, Rob Waterhouse, James Castaneda, Aaron the White, Jordan Longley, Gustav Swan, Marcus Arzner, Rashid Ali, Phil de Oink Oink, Izzy, Spinning Three Plates, David Silverman, Maggie Pakskowski, Spencer Lightfoot, Winston Kaywood, Robert Wetzel, Anthony Beckett, Lexi Schwinn, Sky Chappelle and Kelly Moneymaker. Castro was also sad.